so one of the big things that is going to happen this year out of many i mean you know about the pregnancy thing that's a huge thing um obviously but my upcoming trip to haiti um some of the things i'm going to be doing in haiti is quite varied right i've never been to haiti before um it's going to be my first trip really uh to the caribbean in gosh 10 years i guess <laughs> Went to the Bahamas once, but um, and that was on a cruise. Bahamas is by far one of the more um, tourist-friendly areas of the Caribbean. Um, but I'm going to Haiti basically for business. Uh, I'm going to be going there teaching some folks on beekeeping. Um, we have four folks that are going to be uh, in the program that I'm, I'm setting up first. Uh, they're part of a not-for-profit group. Uh, <clears throat> and the actual highs will be sitting on that property. So these individuals will not only take the lessons that I'm teaching them, but they're going to be, um, throughout the entire year, working with the hives, um, basically just inspecting them, doing different things, and just learning about bees and just getting comfortable. The overall um, comfort of being around a thousand different stinking insects is a little bit overwhelming for really anyone. Um, so it's the idea of saying, okay, look, you know, you know you're going to go into the lion's den. You might get stung a time or two, but the more you get stung, the easier it is for you to go in the second, third, fourth, and fifth time, and then eventually it's not even a thought. Uh, I want them to be able to understand, um, you know, the different diseases that can happen, uh, when to split a hive to prevent swarming, uh, just various different things. So that's going to be pretty much the bulk of what I'm doing there the first time around. And also bringing in a lot of the equipment. Uh, the first step of, of any of the uh, inspections would be obviously um, knowing your equipment and how to use it, proper usage, things like that. Um, so that's going to be there for them to have they're not going to be harvesting any honey for the first year. Um, the reason for that is, is that the bees, currently to my understanding, there's no honey bees on the island of uh, Laganov in Haiti, which is where I'm gonna be going. Uh, so what I'm doing is bringing honey bees from the mainland over to this, this very impoverished island so that the locals will be able to understand beekeeping and modern beekeeping at that. And then from that point, we're gonna train a few more people and a few more people as time goes on. Um, and also build up the environment too, um, which goes to my next point. Uh, the, uh, the, the goal is, because the deforestation is a major issue in Haiti, is to bring back a lot of the native plants and trees that exist there, or what's considered to be naturalized uh, plants and trees. These are plants and trees that may not have normally existed in Haiti, but they've been there so long that it's kind of now part of just the landscape. But bringing a lot of those things back um, to certain key areas, protected areas on the island, uh, to basically make sure that not only that it aids in honey production, obviously, but uh, to also help with farmers' crops, you know, um, the, the, the big problem uh, is that farmers will grow food or try to grow food and they combat so many different issues at once. Um, they combat issues such as uh, not enough water because the island does lack water. Uh, the island, let me explain, the island of Laganov is by far worse than any part of Haiti. If, if I have to pretty much bank on it, if Haiti is one of the poorest and they are listed as the poorest nation in the Caribbean, Laganov beats everything because it is by far even more poor based on everything I've seen, watched, heard, and others telling me. Um, so when you, when you think of it that way, it is an island that has a lot of things that it needs so from that perspective no one can really afford fertilizer seeds those types of things so they use sometimes drastic measures for fertilizing crops 
uh, drastic measure, measures such as bird and bat droppings for fertilization. Sorry, I had to get on the kids. Um, so they use that for fertilization. And then as far as water, just getting water to drink is difficult for people. So they have to travel for several hours usually to get water. Now, over the years, there's, there's been a group, a grassroots effort to build wells and things like that in different areas of the island. And that has helped dramatically. Um, and folks use that water for drinking. They use it for bathing. They use that water uh, for... Uh, cooking obviously so they have to pack this water take buckets and barrels and everything else take it up to these um, these wells and put the water in and come back to their homes it's shortened the the distance that folks have had to go uh, the goal for these folks to do this now watch this this documentary called mud and guts and the, the reason why they wanted to do it is because uh, girls are typically uh, responsible for girls and women are responsible for getting water so it prevents them from going to school because if you have to walk for uh you know five miles to get water and bring it back you can imagine how long it takes and we're not talking paved flat roads we're talking a place that has absolutely no roads and very hilly mountainous terrain very rugged environment difficult for vehicles to drive on uh, you know, vehicles can drive over some of these paths that have been created, but they drive at two miles an hour, two to three miles an hour, because it's just so rock, rough and rocky that you would break your axle. So that's kind of the environment that they're up against. Um, then when you couple everything else with that, um, you know, a lot of folks don't have food because they can't grow food because there's no water. It's, it, there's a lot of issues, basically. So by putting in additional plants and, and things like this, you can aid in actually the, the food production because you're gonna have uh, more plants that pollinators like bumblebees, honeybees, birds, and things like that need um, to continue on. And it will attract them to these farmers' gardens. So the second project that I'm doing is a pollinator garden. Um, it will be quite big. Um, and this will have uh, various different types of plants in it, uh, some from Haiti, some from other places, have some herbs in it. The overall design is fairly large. I have software that I'm using that actually designs the uh, entire uh, plot. Um, and then the outside ring of it will have basically a community, uh, which would be called a community garden. So folks in the community, if they don't have their own land, they're able to basically uh, get a plot and they can work that plot of land. Uh, we will have a small community center eventually where folks can go in and uh, learn about uh, proper compost methods so that they can, you know, instead of using bat and uh, bird droppings, they can use uh, green compost uh, to aid in their, in their uh, to fertilize their crops. Uh, understand basically pollination and how that works because we will have a pollinator garden a large one so close by we're hoping that a lot of these community gardens around it which will literally ring around the entire pollinator garden uh, will be very successful because we're going to have uh, different water features and different things like that um, we'll teach them about water catchment um, different things so the goal of this is to basically do two, a couple, two, two different things one is to be a future tourist attraction by having this pollinator garden for two it'll be an educational uh, piece and for three it helps the economy because we're hoping that folks will be able to grow their own food as opposed to buying it when folks are living on a dollar a day and we're talking one meal a day uh, we're hoping that by putting this uh, community garden aspect to it, folks can grow a lot more of their own food. It'd be cheaper for them to, to live and they won't have to buy as much stuff and they can also get more healthier food. Uh, malnutrition is big there on the island, so this helps in a small way to try to combat that. Uh, we're looking at the city of Anse Galay in terms of building everything initially. It's the biggest city on the island, uh, but that's where we're pretty much going to work with just because logistics is just a lot easier. Uh, and then hopefully over time try to do different projects uh, throughout the island. But that's kind of what the trip is initially. Um, 
for Haiti is just the honeybee aspect, getting the bees from the mainland, bringing them over, uh, and installing that, teaching uh, the four individuals about beekeeping, uh, and then just they will continue up the ladder as far as uh, the different levels of beekeeping. Uh, until next time, take care. Thank you.